Hello, and what is up everyone? It is Hachi from The Art of Dota, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking about why you should be playing Wraith King if you're trying to get some easy MMR in 7.19. This hero has received a buff in every single recent update, and he's in a very good position, and one of the strongest laners right now in terms of the dual lane meta. If you guys have been keeping up with TI, you may have noticed that he's being first picked and first banned in a lot of the group stage games by pretty much every single team. I'm here to tell you why, as well as give you some tips for your pubs, as he has one of the highest win rates in pubs right now as well, at a 55-56% to 56 win rate throughout all skill brackets. So, let's get right into it. First off, i just like to talk about the history in terms of the balance updates for Wraith King so you guys know what exactly happened to him that made him so powerful. So, first major buff that he received was in 7.14 that lowered the mana cost for his stun. So they made it scaling now. It used to cost 140 mana at all levels, now it only costs 95 mana at level 1. To balance that, they did lower or raise the cooldown, I mean, uh, at level 1, and now it scales down to 8 seconds. Before, it used to be 8 seconds at all level, but costed 140 mana. Now, Wraith King is happy with that buff. He doesn't care about, you know, a little bit longer cooldown and stun, because you're not spamming it that much. It might affect, like, maybe some first blood plays or something like that. But overall, in terms of the laning stage, you know, the cooldown is irrelevant. The mana cost is what is important, and lowering it from 140 to 95 is a big deal for a hero like Wraith King that has a relatively low mana pool as a strength hero. Now, with a couple of mangoes, a magic stick, maybe even a clarity, you can get easily 10 stuns out before running out of mana. And that is huge. That allows you to constantly be aggressive as you're seeing Universe do here. And in addition, you have these skeletons. Now, they also buff the skeletons and have made them a lot more reliable to get out early on. Now, if you guys don't know how the skeletons used to work, is you had a mechanic where if you could get a crit on a creep, any creep, except for ancients, you would just insta-kill them, and then that's how you get your skeleton charges. Now, even though that was like pretty nice for like some troll builds, because uh, it actually worked with Crystalis as well, so it didn't matter what type of crit uh, that you uh, got on the creep, you, know, you might have seen those meme videos with Crystalis, Wraith King, you know, Fast Jungle or whatever, but even though that was reliable for like jungling and doing stuff like that, that wasn't really necessary good for laning because you're not going to randomly auto-attack creeps in lane all the time. That's just not how you lane, right? And you're not able to reliably get the skeletons out as a result. But now they've changed it so that the skeletons come out, or you get one skeleton charge for every two last hits you get. So you can just last hit and lane like a normal person instead of trying to randomly attack creeps hoping for a crit to get your skeletons. You just lane like normal, get the last hits, and you're gonna be able to get those skeleton charges up and just use them. In addition, they lowered the mana cost for the skeletons as well. They used to cost 75 mana at all levels. Now it only costs 30 at level 1. And you can see how often Universe is able to get these skeletons out and just spam them to harass and lane. It's similar to how a Nature's Prophet would lane. And I think Wraith King is most comparable to a melee Nature's Prophet right now. He has these really annoying creeps to deal with in lane in addition to having also a stun, which Nature's Prophet doesn't have. And he's just going to be able to dominate the lane. He has good damage as well with the Quelling Blade. He has very good damage for last hitting. You see he has 67 right now plus the Quelling Blade. That's another 24. He's able to just completely dominate the CS, which is what you want out of a laner in this patch. Now, combined with a strong support hero, um, like a Dark Willow, which is probably the most popular combo a lot of pro teams are going for right now. I even see that a lot in pubs. But you can have ideally just any support with some extra damage or a stun, and you can really just put a lot of pressure and get a lot of kills in the lane. And you can see Tiny is not a weak laner. He's no joke. They probably picked this Tiny knowing that the Wraith King was coming, and it's just not working out. With his low armor, he's taking a lot of damage from these skeletons as they have also received the damage buff as well. They used to only do 25 damage, and now they do 35 damage. So not only are they more reliable to build up the charges, you also get more damage out of them, and they're also more survivable as well, as they did receive a buff to get 30% magic resist in, I believe that was patch 7.17, but now in 7.19, they've been buffed again to have 50% 
damage res or magic resist, which means that um, a tiny avalanche will just barely do any damage to them at all. In addition, their bounty has been reduced as well. They only give away five gold now. So you have five gold giving skeletons that do 35 damage with 50% magic resist. They have decent HP. Uh, let's check how much they actually have. I don't know. 350, that's not bad. And you have a recipe for a dominating hero. It's gotta say. Because look at these skeletons. They allow you to dive, they tank the tower for you, they do a ton of damage, and you can get them out very often. And if you're playing against a hero that has no way to deal with the skeletons, it's pretty much an auto win in the lane, actually. You get your skeletons up, you get your stun, it's easy to play, it's easy to execute, you're lasting like normal, they walk up, you summon some skeletons, you sh shoot the stun at them, and that's how you control the skeletons, by the way. So you, the way they work is you can't micro them at all. So he's a not micro-intensive hero. It's a fitting design for a hero that is known to be one of the easiest heroes in the game as he used to only have one button, now technically he has two. But you summon the skeletons, you stun, and they'll attack whatever you stun. And if you don't stun, they'll attack whatever the first thing they see, and they'll usually just chase it down until they kill it or they die. Um, that's mostly how it works. There's some ways to like disjoint them and remove the aggro, but for the most part, um, if you stay in vision of them, they'll just chase you to the ends of the earth, pretty much. Like Even if you're running all the way back to base, they don't care. They're skeletons. They're already dead. What did they have to lose? So. That pretty much covered every single major buff to Wraith King. I think there's a couple of other things I might have missed, but um, oh, I believe the experience gain for the skeletons has also been reduced. So they pretty much give no no bounty, you know, just a little bit. Um, they ha have the same treatment to the Broodmother Spiders, but yeah, that was every single buff that Wraith King has received. Now I'm gonna go into talking about um, how you're gonna lane him. As you may have watched, um, the way you're going to lane him is pretty simple, right? You start off with a bunch of mangoes, you know, usually two is enough, and you just spam your stun. You lane there with uh, another support, and primarily, uh, Wraith King is being played as an off laner right now in the pro meta, but for your pups, you really can take him to the safe lane as well. But I think he is better in the off lane position as... He can work as a hard carry, but ideally you just want him to be that annoying hero, the initiator. You can rush a blink dagger, just go in there, and because he has two lives, you really have no fear. And <laughs> look at that, the skeletons, they're doing work. Um, that's probably the most broken part about the hero, by the way, is these skeletons. And it's not just skeletons, this spell is also a crit. So if you're getting that crit, and he actually does a lot of uh, physical burst damage, especially against low armor heroes. You get the stun in, and if you like get one or two crits on them, you usually can just insta kill a hero. Um, and that is a very good thing, as that's how you want to play him. You know, constantly put aggression in the lane, rotate a lot of heroes to your lane. Now, he is not a solo laner, so you will need a support. Uh, if you're just letting your Wraith King solo off lane, or you're picking Wraith King to just solo off lane, you're doing it wrong. Uh, you need another support with you. As I mentioned, Dark Willow is probably the most popular uh, in terms of pro players right now and even in pubs uh, at the high level, highest level of dota it has feels like dark will just fits so well with wraith king as he's able to stun and she can follow up with the bramble maze lock the enemy in place you know get a lot of attacks in as she has good bat and then you just take over the lane entirely and in addition to being able to kill people with your skeletons they also push incredibly quickly you know, with that 35 damage per skeleton, and you get up to eight skeletons. You know, Universe is going for a more standard build and more uh, safe build here, going for 2-1-2, and then putting more points in Wraith Fire Blast afterwards. But I've even seen some Wraith Kings just max out Mortal Strike. You know, go for 2-0-4 build and just summon as many skeletons as possible. Now, they do have answers to the skeletons in this game, as Tiny with the tree. And Bloodseeker can clear them out with the pure damage as they only have magic resist. But if you're playing against heroes that have no reliable way to clear out your skeletons, max that shit out. 
Max out your mortal strike, get up to 8 charges, summon the skeletons, and watch them wreak havoc. As your opponents really have no other answer other than to run away. They do way too much damage. If they walk in, if they try to fight, they're definitely going to die. Because, you know, you have this very spamble stun that you're able to just constantly shoot out, and it will redirect the skeletons to them, and it will pretty much seal their fate, especially for support heroes. And even heroes like AM, I did mention a little bit before, but most people might pick AM to counter your Wraith King. They think, oh, mana burn. This is going to be great. Have you ever seen a Wraith King with a dual lane lane against an AM? It is not pretty. AM actually loses that lane hard. And, you know, that might just be enough for your team to win the game. As you're an off lane Wraith King dominating their AM, you have another carry, and you don't care that you get countered by AM later on in the game. Um, because eventually you'll get level 20 and at that point he doesn't necessarily counter you anymore as you have a no reincarnation mana cost you don't have to worry about not getting your ultimate off. Now notice that universe was able to just take over the safe lane and is able to rotate gets a very early blink dagger being able to just pretty much free farm the lane and dominate and now he's able to just contribute in fights and be a nuisance. You know, very low cooldown stun at 8 seconds, and he's just constantly able to just blink in there, sh shoot out some stuns, just be a nuisance, and also do a lot of damage. As I mentioned, the crit is no joke. If you get some crits out, it does a ton of burst, and also the skeletons are also just doing additional damage throughout the entire fight. And guess what? You have two lives, so even if you die, you're not actually dead. And with the blink dagger, if the cooldown was up, oh, it still gets out there. So with the blink dagger, after you die, you're pretty much guaranteed to get away. And that's why I advocate, please rush Blink Dagger on Wraith King. You know, there's other builds floating around. I've even some, seen some pro players go for a Helm of the Dominator in some pubs, as it allows you to just be super aggressive in terms of pushing the lane. But if you want to contribute to your team fights, be a useful hero, buy a Blink, please. Um, yeah, no Midas. You know, maybe situationally, you can go for something greedy, like a Radiance or a Midas, something like that. If uh, there's no fighting going on at all, but if you see that there's going to be fighting of any kind, please buy a Blink, as it is such a good item on Raid King to get first. It allows him to do his job, and also, um, it keeps you alive. What is better than that? Because you don't want to die with your ultimate and then just die again, and just look silly. You get a Blink Dagger, and you're going to be able to Blink out in most scenarios, unless the enemy has some way to just cancel your blink immediately after respawning, which is pretty hard to do. Now, um, the item after blink can depend on the game. A lot of pros are building uh, blade mail right now, as it allows you, again, just to go in and be a nuisance. They don't want to focus you because you have the blade mail on, but they kind of have to because you're right in their face doing some damage with your crit as well as stunning everybody in the vicinity. Of course, you're only able to stun one person at a time, but for the most part, that is enough disruption um, for your team to win the team fight. You know, this constantly stunning hero in the team fight. The enemy doesn't necessarily want to focus him, as then he'll respawn and, you know, in addition, slow everyone in the area and then just come back again to continue doing his thing. And it's not hard, right? It's how do you how do you actually play Raid King? You go in, stun people, attack them, you know, summon some skeletons, and do your thing. Um, the main thing about the hero is it's just a strong laning stage, which does require some coordination, as I mentioned. This is not a hero that you're necessarily just going to be able to straight up dominate the lane by yourself, unless you're playing against really bad opponents that just don't respect your skeletons or just your stun at all. But with any type of dual lane, you're able to just pretty much auto win the lane, I gotta say. Um, you know, if the enemy maybe tri lanes you, they will be able to win the lane, but for the most part in a dual lane meta, uh, against most carries specifically, especially if in your bracket people are just picking greedier carries, he'll be able to dominate that. And with that, you can transition it into a very early advantage in terms of early tower advantage. Because for the most part, if you lose the lane to Wraith King, your tower is dead. And that's why the hero is being picked in the pro scene, because you want that in terms of a hero. You want a hero that not only wins the lane, but a hero that can also take the tower very quickly. Um, it pretty much sets you up to have a good game. Because, for example, you can pick other offlaners that are being popular right now, um, or non-standard offlaners like a Bloodseeker or a Ursa being played in the offlane. They'll win their lane, but they don't have tower threat. 
right? Um, it's very hard for a Bloodseeker or an Ursa to push the tower, whereas Wraith King, he wins the lane, he takes the tower very quickly, and that's all because of his skeletons. Now, transitioning into the mid to late game, Wraith King can also be a very formidable carry. Um, there's a lot of builds floating around. Uh, again, most pros are going for pretty standard Magic Wand or Soul Ring into Blink as their first items. Of course, you're going to get Treads as well. But after that, again, I mentioned uh, a good value item is Blade Mail, especially if you're playing against heroes that can't control their damage, um, especially like a Luna. I think Wraith King completely destroys Luna. Not only does he have a very good laning stage against her, as she has no way to clear out the skeletons reliably unless she wants to level up Glaives, but I, don't, I doubt that even will be enough. But... Uh, if you just blink with blade mail into Eclipse, Luna will just kill herself every single time, pretty much. And in this game, it's not bad against Bloodseeker, as he can just get ruptured, just run. He's in character, they have two lives. But after the blade mail, if you want to go for blade mail, um, again, a lot of people are going for either a defensive route, such as going for a what is it, a halberd, or other people opting for more aggressive builds. Um, I don't think I've seen a armlet ra uh, Wraith King, but it's very good, especially for playing pubs. It increases your stats by a lot, it gives you a lot of extra health, damage, attack speed, everything you need to be able to carry the game. And that is mainly for pubs, as for pro teams, they coordinate and the Wraith King can go for a little bit more utility. So that's where you see the halberds and sometimes even the agnims come out for Wraith. But another staple item for him is a AC. You go for AC, it's going to not only buff yourself up, but it's going to buff up your skeletons as well as your whole team, giving them all that extra armor and attack speed. As I mentioned, some players have opted for Helm of Dom and tested it, but it doesn't seem the best unless you know that you're just going to snowball, as it seems like a dead item slot, but you can get a lot done with the Helm of the Dom if you want to actually micro. But again, Probably the reason why you're playing Wraith King is you just want an easy hero. I don't think too much, so um, I'm not advocating for Helm of the Dom. I'm just giving it out as an option. Um, other items that you can go for, I think Universe goes for, I, like, I think he likes MKB into, uh, what is it? I think he bought AC or a Moon Shard actually, but at that point they were just dominating. Super hard. I think I was in the 39 to 1 game, if you guys missed that. Um, Fnatic actually beat Liquid 39 to 1. And no surprise, Wraith King was involved there. And I've actually played with uh, Universe's Wraith King in pubs. And it's super simple what you're able to do with the hero. But he seems to be able to assert so much pressure on the map. Because even in the mid game, your skeleton's not necessarily going to be a kill threat to enemies anymore. But it allows you to push a lane without actually being there. It pretty much just adds an additional creep wave into whatever lane you summon them in. And you got to be sure that you actually summon them to the lane. Because sometimes they get lost in the jungle and they just start walking around. Maybe kill themselves to ancients. But if you summon them in a lane, um, you're able to just get a lot of value out of them. Now, just a little bit quick tip to be able to push lanes as quickly as possible without putting yourself at risk. Because even if you have two lives, you do get caught out. You probably die if the enemy has you know a lot of heroes there. Even with your blink dagger. As long as they have the catch to uh, follow up but you can actually stun the range creep and it just kills it with one stun and that's just going to give you some quick lane pushing without actually threatening so you can go in stun the range creep and just summon your skeletons if you feel really in danger you can do that and it's going to put a lot of pressure on the lane without putting you at risk and what you're able to do after that is you don't show in the lane you let your skeletons push in the lane and then you just set up for ganks or you farm the jungle right so you push lanes in with your skeletons, enemy will have to defend it. If they defend it with only one hero, as you see there, the AA was alone. You're able to set up with maybe a support or even by just by yourself, especially if you went for a more damage heavy build, like an armlet. You can just go in there, get a kill, get out, and just continue to farm. And once you get Wraith King with a lot of items, he's super annoying as he pretty much has a constant Aegis, right? So you're effectiveness is not necessarily doubled but you're always going to be in there maximize your health as you're able to just pretty much die without caring and you go in there you can fully commit onto a hero kill them die and then come back continue to fight 
and of course his auras are great to combine with your carries uh, especially if you have other right clicking carries in the game um, you're gonna be able to give them that life steal and in terms of the Aghanims build I just like to talk about that a little bit here as you see universe go for it the Aghanims can be completely broken as it will just guarantee that your team wins every fight as even if your carry heroes die they just respawn as a ghost they can be alive for another seven seconds and that's usually long enough to if not just trade evenly and just double team wipe um and i've definitely seen that you know a lot of raytheon games as i actually play the hero uh, quite a bit and i do build ags quite often as well as it's just it used to be a meme but now you actually see it in pro gameplay and i'm super hyped about that and if you guys continue to watch DI, you're surely going to see this hero in more and more games. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Universe actually goes back to Halberd here. But I, it is being built, trust me. Uh, Aghanims is being built by Pro Wraith Kings. And not necessarily with the highest win rate, but people are building it. And there's even an interaction with Venge. And I think Venge Wraith King can potentially be a really strong lane as well, um, if you guys want to run that. There's a lot of different lanes you can go for. But... I'm pretty much going to wrap up the video now as make sure you get a dual lane partner with your Wraith King and Pubs and you'll be able to get a ton of easy MMR. I promise you. Pick this hero, take him to the off lane. I mean, you can get away with playing him as carry, but ideally he's played as an off laner. Get a good support, dominate the lane, and you'll see. You know, really not that much effort required. It is Wraith King. He's the one button hero. You get a fast blink dagger. You blink on peeps, crit them in the face, win the game, get some MMR, have a good time. I'll see you all in the next video. It's been Hachi, and also be sure to subscribe if you guys enjoyed the video, as I haven't been uploading that much recently, but I will again, promise you, after TI, as I am going to TI. If you guys want a video talking about TI um, and my trip, let me know. I can do that very easily. And again, so make sure you subscribe, like the video, and I'll see you all in the next one. Itachi, signing out.